I will let you in in a huge anti-aging secret that no one talks about that if you start practicing it's going to make you look years younger when you need it. As we age our skin loses elasticity and you know what everything changes. And even though that we all know that it's eventually going to happen, we are never prepared for it. In this video, I will tell you some key skincare anti-aging tips that are great for slowing down time and taking good care of your skin before it's too late. But let's start with the first part of this video that is going to be one of the key steps on uh, a skincare routine in general, but even more if we're talking about anti-aging, and that is exfoliating. Exfoliating is a big step in this routine or in any routine in general for several reasons. First of all, you want to keep the turnover cell rate of your skin active. That's going to help to keep your skin more bright, clear, and it's also going to help all of the other products that you use to absorb better in the skin. Not every exfoliating method is good for everybody. There are millions of products to exfoliate your skin, but they all fall into mainly two big methods. I'm going to explain the methods in a little bit and I'm also going to let you know which is my favorite and which product is my favorite, so stick around for that. Having said that, it is important to know that even though exfoliating is such an important step, then over exfoliating can be even worse than not exfoliating at all. So make sure that you're not doing it more than two times a week. I know you hear everywhere and it's recommended to do from two to three times a week, but I feel like a third time a week can be too much in the line of maybe being too much. So I always stick to maximum two times a week, especially if you're using a stronger method. Now, before you choose which method you're going to use to exfoliate your skin, you need to consider what it is already in your skincare routine because if you're using products like retinols or benzoyl peroxide in the case of acne then you can create even more problems because these kind of products tend to peel the skin and if you exfoliate on top of that you're going to create even drier skin or even more acne breakouts so it's important that you know what ingredients are in your skincare and from then you can choose the method you want and the product now let's talk about the methods there are two big ones. So chemical exfoliation, which as the name suggests, use alpha and beta hydroxy acids to gently dissolve dead cells. The second method is mechanical or physical exfoliation, which as the name suggests, physically removes dead skin cells by using tools like a brush, a glove, sponges, or a scrub. I know that when you hear chemicals and acids, you want to run to the mountain and save yourself, but chemical exfoliation tends to be very mild and very gentle with the skin, and it's actually the one recommended for drier skin or very sensitive or acne prone skin. But of course, you can find higher concentration of these products and get a stronger exfoliation, but this is more recommended for people with oiler skin or uh, thicker skin in general. This method is better suited for people with oiler skin or thicker skin in general, but in my opinion is one of those things that the line is too thin, it's very easy to over exfoliate and to overdo it, so be very careful if you want to choose this method. Disregarding the method that you choose, you want to avoid a strong exfoliation process if your skin is hyperpigmentation prone. So if you tend to get pigmentation like me, then avoid, not exfoliation, but avoid a strong exfoliating process. You always hear me in my videos and in my social media saying that I 100% prefer chemical exfoliation, but there are one product, there's two products, but they act the same way and they're basically the same thing. I'm going to link you both in the description box, but I only have one right here to show you. It's actually a physical exfoliator and I do use it quite often. This is Cure, which is the one that I use most often. I use this once a month, maybe twice, depending on my skin, how it is but the rest of the time I always use chemical exfoliators. I do, however, prefer a physical exfoliator in the rest of my body. So knees, elbows, all of that, I prefer to do it with a physical exfoliator. Now let's move on to the second part. This is the most important part of all of them because this is 
even more important and bigger than the huge secret that I have for you later on in the video. If you want great, healthy and young skin for a long time, then you have to use sunscreen. Especially if you're pretending to be outside in the beach or doing errands outside. But even if you're at home or in the office and you're near a window, you need to be wearing sunscreen. So even if you're indoors, you want to always wear sunscreen. If you're going to do makeup, then use one that is not very oily. That way your makeup is not going to slide off. Like it or not, sunscreen can actually slow down skin aging and it's also going to help you prevent skin cancer. Look for a sunscreen that offers broad spectrum of SPF 30 minimum, but to be honest, in my life, the only sunscreen that exists is SPF 50. I don't use anything less than that. The big thing with sun damage is that you don't see it right away. So when you actually see sun damage, it's already too late. And I'm not only talking about skin cancer, which by itself should be enough reason to wear sunscreen. All the pigmentation and the freckles and the edge spots are from damage that happened a long time ago. And to take care of that is way more difficult than just applying sunscreen every day. Girls, sun is not going to make you look younger and it's not going to make you look better with time. Even though you're happy with your tan right now and you feel very beautiful, over time it will make you look older faster. So avoid sun exposure and learn to properly fake tan that you don't look like an Oompa Loompa. Which brings me to a parenthesis where I tell you that I am actually bringing a video on how to properly fake tan. So make sure you subscribe and turn on the notifications so you don't miss that video. And also give me a thumbs up if you're enjoying the video. Do not spray perfume in your neck. Women tend to age faster here, or let me rephrase that, we don't tend to age faster there, it just shows faster. The neck and the chest are the number one place where you can tell someone's age, even more than the face. As you know, dry skin tends to wrinkle faster than oily skin or skin that is properly hydrated. So when you spray perfume in your chest or in your neck, the amount of alcohol in the perfume can actually dry out your skin and make it wrinkle faster. Not to mention that it's also going to dissolve the sunscreen that you applied in your chest, leaving it exposed to sun damage. That's why you see a lot of women with freckles or sunspots in the chest. You want to use oils to add moisture to your skin. You can mix it with your creams as well, with your lotions to help it absorb better. But in general, all of your skincare routine that you use in your face, you should take it down to your décolletage and your shoulders, all your chest area in general. Here is my big secret. Are you prepared? Sleep in your back. I know this sounds very silly, but trust me, sleep in your back. This is a big one, if not the biggest skin care anti-aging secret that no one, absolutely no one talks about. I don't know why, or at least no one told me. I've never heard it from anyone. And I find out because I was actually doing an Instagram story and I saw it and I was like, <gasps> since when I am old and I couldn't believe it. This is probably the best anti-aging tip that I can give you after the sunscreen, of course. Because let's think about Botox for a second. Why do people use Botox to look younger? It's because Botox prevents you from doing repetitive facial expressions, aka wrinkles. So when you smile a lot, you get wrinkles. When you squint a lot, you get wrinkles. All of that is because you are doing repetitive facial expressions that fold the skin in the same place and in the end, it will create a wrinkle, okay? We have that clear now. You know what? We sleep a lot. I did the math very roughly and we sleep about 2,500 hours a year. And if you add that to 20 years, 30 years, and it's not like we're smiling 12 hours a day and we still get wrinkles. Now imagine if you're sleeping in your side six to eight hours a day for all of your life and you have a pillow to your face creating these wrinkles and these lines all night long for years and years. This is what happens. So you're basically doing a facial expression, very repetitive, 
for a long time for not a little while but hours at night and plus you have the pressure of the pillow I know it's mind-blowing if you really want to prevent wrinkles there's a very simple thing that you can do is just sleep in your back and you're not going to apply pressure to your face to your chest or to your spine and I say simple because if you're like me and you're a side sleeper or an upside down sleeper you know there's nothing simple about sleeping in your back especially if you snore or you have reflux like I do but there are always ways you can train your body to get used to sleeping in your back and like with everything we're humans we get used to it and you will have the skincare benefits and not to mention when I was doing my research I found that it's actually the best position to sleep for your spine and only about 3% of humans in the world sleep this way so there you go it's actually more than wrinkles now and look for me has been a struggle I'm not going to lie but even after just days of sleeping in my back I've seen a huge difference especially in my decolletage and in my face like I used to have a wrinkle here that I didn't know why it was happening because it was so weird and trust me after days of doing it you see a difference now imagine if you don't apply that pressure for years and years. You are really going to look years younger compared to people that do sleep on their side or upside down. I bought this pillow to help me train myself to sleep backwards and it made a huge difference because I thought it was just going to be as easy as just turning it around and sleeping in my back. Trust me, it's not is doable but it's not that easy and this pillow has made a difference because it gives me the correct support I don't know if you can see there um, in the camera but it gives you the support that you need in the neck in the back of your neck and also these little mountains over here give support in the sides of your head so it doesn't go to any side which is going to be way more comfortable to sleeping on your back I'm going to link you this one if I can find this one I'm going to link you a similar one there are a lot of brands so you don't have to get this one this has definitely helped me a lot it is a little bit like small than a regular pillow but to be honest if you're sleeping in your back you don't need a bigger pillow it's just like it looks weird but there's also one extra thing that you need to know is that when you're sleeping in your back you need to add a flat pillow under your knees or something to give you support so if you're going to get a pillow like that one you can also get one for your knees that already has the shape and is designed for that this is going to help support your lower back because look I learned the hard way when I started this journey of sleeping in my back I had the worst back pain I've had in my life and it was as simple as just putting a pillow under my knees to give support to my lower back it doesn't hurt anymore so save yourself the pain and the trouble and add this under your knees it's very very important and it's also going to give your spine the support it needs to be like in the best shape I guess so trust me don't miss a step you can google how to sleep on your back and there's actually a lot of information about it one of the biggest questions about skincare is when should I start using anti-aging products well, the answer is simple, yesterday. I mean, you have to take care of your skin and have in mind that it's going to age eventually from as young as you can. Of course, don't punish yourself if you haven't started to do it yet. Just start a routine and be consistent with it from now on because now you know and it's always better later than never. If you need help finding some skincare products or creating a routine, then click in the video over here where I show you how to double cleanse and that way you can start a routine by cleansing properly, which is key for a great routine. See you in the next one. Un beso. Bye.